Hi everyone, welcome to Amy Learns to Cook. On the show today, we are gonna make my turkey meatloaf muffins. These are absolutely fantastic. I make them all the time. They're nice individual portions. You can take them to work for lunch. They're great for kids. They are delicious. So the kitchen is open and let's make some turkey meatloaf muffins. So this recipe originally started out live from the Barefoot Contessa. I used to make this and I absolutely love it, but over the years I've made some changes to it. So it's somewhat of the same process the Barefoot Contessa uses, but with an Amy twist, right? So what's great is once you start making it, you can put your own twist on it. So it will become Ina's and mine and yours. So let's get started. The very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna chop some onions and some garlic. I'm gonna be using a food processor just cause I want it to go a little faster. I have a whole bunch of garlic in this recipe. You might want to use like four cloves. I like a lot of garlic and we're going to be using two and a half pounds of turkey meat. So you can use four to five cloves of garlic. I'm going to cut up all this just because I might use it later in a recipe this afternoon. So let me go ahead and peel it. And I'm using, see this knife? It's gold. I have a gold knife today. <laughs> Eric's making fun of my gold knife. It's a core kitchen um, and it's a little cheap thing, but to me it's solid gold, right? So I have like 10 cloves of garlic. I did the whole um, head of garlic. I just did that because we're going to be doing some cooking this afternoon and I want to have some garlic available. So we have a little seven cup food processor um, here. I'll put all this equipment down in the description if you want to take a look at it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put it on high and we're going to put our garlic in. And I'm doing my garlic separate from the onion because I want to cook it separately. I don't want the garlic burning. So we're just doing the garlic first. Ooh, that was quick. <laughs> Okay, let me get this garlic out of here. Okay, next I have a medium onion and we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna get the um, paper off the onion and then we're gonna put it in the food processor. And because this is a small food processor, it kind of has a, um, small shoot on it. So I'm going to break it down a little bit and now let's chop it. So we'll take our plunger out. We'll go ahead and throw in the onion. We just want a nice chop on this. Pretty good. So if you're doing it by hand, you just want to do this in a medium dice. I'm going to go ahead and get this out of here. Now we'll work on the flavoring for the meatloaf. So we have a saute over medium heat. Um, can I just pan geek for a minute? This is the pan that I got on my birthday haul. I absolutely love it. This is the very first time that I'm using it. It is a tri-ply um, Viking and I got it at Home Goods, and I got a really good deal on it. If you want to take a look at this pan, I'll put a link in the description, but let me tell you, it is absolutely beautiful, right? So my little pan geek is over. So we're going to put a couple tablespoons of olive oil in our beautiful pan here and we're going to start out sauteing our onions. Ooh.
And we're just gonna saute them until they're translucent. Oh, I love that sound. I don't know what it is. You know, you can go out to eat all the time. That's what I used to do. And ever since I started cooking, that sound right there, that just brightened your whole day. So our onions are looking really good. We're gonna put in the garlic. I did the whole clove, so we're just gonna put in some. I would put in probably four cloves of garlic. We're just gonna cook this about a minute. You don't wanna burn your garlic. So I'm gonna put some seasoning in here. You can season this however you want. The original recipe just uses thyme. I'm gonna use this Sunny Paris. I get this at Penzi's and I absolutely love it. It has dried shallots in it and it smells so good. Um, I'll put a link in the description for this, but if you just spice it however you want to, Gar granulated garlic, um, thyme, fresh thyme is always good. I'm just gonna drop a nice amount of Sunny Paris in there. I'm also gonna put a little bit of granulated garlic. A couple teaspoons, because I like it. And we're gonna bloom our spices. And that's just gonna heat the spices up a little bit and it's gonna bring their flavor and aroma out. And it smells delicious. Eric's back there like, yeah. Eric is not a big turkey meatloaf fan because a lot of times it's dry, but this turkey meatloaf is so flavorful and it's definitely not dry. So we have one cup of chicken broth and I always make my chicken broth out of better than bouillon. Otherwise I make homemade, but this is from better than bouillon. We also have a third a cup of Worcestershire. I don't know how to pronounce that. If you know how to pronounce it, let me know. <laughs> Worcestershire. We're gonna put a couple tablespoons of tomato paste and I always buy my tomato paste in these tubes because when you open it you can just keep using it put it in the refrigerator you don't have to put it in another container it's just a lot more convenient and it actually stays pretty good I'm going to put a couple tablespoons perfectly measured <laughs> and because I am who I am We're going to bring this up to a boil, reduce the heat a little bit. We're going to let it reduce a little bit because we want a little bit of this liquid to come out of here. It smells so good. If you use a nice flavorful tomato paste, it really just brings this up a million notches. So we want to reduce this probably about a third or a half. And then when we're done, we're going to cut the heat off and we're going to set it to the side. We want it to fully cool down because this is going to be going into our raw meat. If you want to make this ahead of time, ideally, you'll make this sort of in the refrigerator till it's cold, then put it in your meatloaf. We'll probably do that for a little bit, maybe throw it in a freezer a minute to get that, that heat off of it, get the chill going, and then um, we'll be able to assemble our meatloaf muffins. Wow, it smells really good. So it's reduced a little bit. It's still a little liquidy because we're gonna be putting breadcrumbs in the um, meatloaf and it's gonna keep that moisture in there. Um, so you don't want to reduce it all the way down. This looks absolutely fantastic. So I've turned the heat off. We're going to take this off here. We're going to let this cool all the way down. Um, best to refrigerate it. Um, so we're going to do that and then we'll come back and finish the meatloaf. Let's go. Time to make the turkey meatloaf. Now you guys know the biggest complaint about turkey meatloaf is that it's all dried out. This is not dried out. It's nice and flavorful, lots of spices, and particularly from this little concoction we made, 
that is going to be great. Don't worry about that liquid because we're going to be putting breadcrumbs in there and it just comes out soft and juicy, right? So we have two and a half pounds of ground turkey. We're going to go ahead and put a cup of plain breadcrumbs. I use Progresso breadcrumbs. Those are the ones I like. We're going to put two eggs. That's our binder. And we're going to put this beautifulness. This is what we created in our um, saute pan. It's really cooled off. We put it in the refrigerator and it's totally cooled down. We're going to go ahead and put that in there. Oh yeah, see? <laughs> this is not your everyday turkey meatloaf. So I'm also going to give us a little salt and pepper. I did taste this and to me it had a little bit of salt to it from the chicken broth, but I am going to put a little additional salt because turkey meat needs salt. Otherwise it's kind of bland. Also going to put some fresh cracked pepper, papier. And we're going to give it the old squeeze play. Ooh. <laughs> The old squeeze play. So I put a little bit more breadcrumb just because I want to, you know, take up a little bit of more of that liquid. It really depends on how much you um, you let it reduce. But the breadcrumb to me makes it nice and soft, and it takes up that liquid. It's just really nice. So it's time to muffin up. So I have some Texas size muffin pans. These are great. These are actually by Wilton and I'll leave a link down in the description for these. I love these. I think they're called jumbo, but also Texas size. Um, they're nice and big, great for our meatloaf. And believe it or not, I only paid five bucks a piece for these pans. So that's even better. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put a little bit of grease on these. The only reason I'm doing that just to ensure that we don't get a lot of sticking going on. This is a non-stick pan, but you know how that is. Um, I don't use the spray. I know using Crisco isn't that great either, but I don't think the spray is all that great for you. Um, the reason I don't is the spray tends to gunk up your nonstick uh, baking pans and it leaves a residue on there that's pretty impossible to get off. So you can brush these with olive oil if you want to or canola. Just use a little like silicone brush and you can do it that way. I have the stove preheating at 350 and we're going to make our muffins. So usually when I make this, it makes 10 muffins. It depends on how much you stuff these little things. I like to get a nice round top on these bad boys. So um, I get 10 out of them. Usually what I do in the remaining two cups is I fill them with water, maybe a third of the way full just so we don't get any burning in there and it gives a little steam in the oven to our muffins here. So I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to fill these bad boys up. I have a scoop here. We're just going to press them in. This makes it really easy. <laughs> and we're going to get a little poof on them because I like them a little poofy. We'll see how many we get. It really depends if you're not using this exact pan. Um, you know, it depends on the size of the cups in your muffin pan. Okay, so I did prep two pans because I thought it would go over a little bit. 
um, cause I didn't stuff these as much as I did last time. So I made two small ones in this pan. We're just going to have to watch cause the temperature on these two are going to be different than those, those. Um, if you stuff them a little more, you won't end up having this and it'll fit in your muffin pan. Um, or you can go ahead and make three pounds. It doesn't matter. Every time I make this is different. Sometimes it comes out as 10. Sometimes it comes out as eight. It all depends on how I feel that day. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little water into these extra cups, mainly because I don't want them to just burn in the um, oven because it will leave like dark in there and it'll give a little steam for these things inside the oven. So that's just an added benefit. So we're going to put these in the oven we're going to cook them to at least an internal temperature of 165, 170. You can cook them as high as you want. In the meantime, while these are in the oven, we're going to get work on my famous meatloaf sauce. We're going to put the sauce on the um, meatloaf muffins when they're halfway done and when, when they're three quarters of the way done. I don't put them on at the very beginning just because my sauce has some brown sugar in there and I don't want it to burn particularly since they're going to be in the oven for a little while. So we're going to make it while they're in there. We're going to put them on, put the sauce on at halfway and three quarters of the way done. So I'm going to get these in the oven and let's get working on the sauce. Meatloaf sauce. This is where you can get creative. This is where you can make a sauce your own. I can show you how I make mine. Um, I've developed this sauce. I kind of, I use a variation of this sauce on my, um, stuffed peppers, stuffed bell peppers. Um, I love it. And you can measure it out or you can do what I do and I just go for it, right? Ketchup. Some people just put ketchup on there and I want a little bit more flavor and I want it to be a little stickier. So that's why I make my own sauce sort of kicked up. So I use Heinz ketchup. This is my ketchup standard. If you use a different kind of ketchup, you'll have to adjust the um, recipe how you want because ketchup has its own flavor. And this is the stuff that I like. This is ketchup to me. Um, but you can use your favorite. Woo! So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a cup of ketchup in here. And um, I'm also gonna put a half a cup of brown sugar. That's going to give us our sticky to the sauce. Also, we're going to put some Dijon. A um, couple tablespoons. And this is, this is a home sauce. If you want your sauce to come out exactly the same every time you make it, then measure exactly. Um, I sort of do it like that. Worcestershire. This is going to give us sort of that um, unami taste. It sort of brings up your flavor like um, a richness to it. Um, I can't say a meaty at all. It just, it just adds so much to the sauce. Woo, that's two tablespoons, right? <laughs> and we're going to go with a little bit of sriracha. You can put as much sriracha or as little as you want. Ah, teaspoon, tablespoon, heck, just put sriracha on it, right? We're going to stir this up. And the Worcestershire is going to make it a little liquidy, but you don't want it over liquidy. If you don't like Worcestershire, then put a little, little tiny bit of water in there. See, that's looking pretty good. I like the color of it. Want it a little redder? <laughs> this sauce is yours, right? And you can do it whatever you want. You can put spices in here. You can make this your own secret little sauce. Just don't tell anybody your recipe. So that's looking really, really good. This sauce is gonna come up it's going to be a little sweet, it's going to be a little sticky, it's going to be delicious. So when the meatloaf muffins are halfway done, we're going to give them their first layer of sauce. 
Then when they're three quarters of the way done, we're going to give them a second layer. And we're gonna, then we're going to let that sauce cook up a little bit so it gets nice and sticky on there. Mm, it's going to be delicious. So I sauced those two because they came up to a decent temperature before these. So we're ready to do our first saucing on these. Uh, This sauce is going to cook up. I don't want to put it on too early because I don't want to um, burn it, but I also want the sauce to cook. And it's just at the point where it's going to cook up nicely. Ooh, yeah. They're out of the oven. They've been sauced. And let me tell you, these are off the chain. Look at them. They look absolutely delicious. Um, I just want to thank Ina for being my inspiration of this. Um, I took her recipe and Amy styled it and look what we got. We got some outstanding looking um, muffins. So let me see if I can get these babies out. So we have our two little ones. I'm gonna get those out first because that's what I'm gonna do my taste test on. These I'm gonna take for lunch to work. Um, oh my gosh. Now that's turkey meatloaf to me. <laughs> wow. Um. I think the worst is sure really helps to um really helps to bring out a lot of flavor of these so let's go for it <laughs> one muffin boom 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 two muffin boom 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 three muffin boom 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 Woo! Four muffin. Boom, 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 boom. Woo! Move them up here so I have a little bit more room. Holy Toledo. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah! That's, that's pretty nice. That's incredible. <laughs> Eric is not a turkey meatloaf fan, but he's standing over here acting like he's getting ready to pounce. Boom, 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 boom. Wow. Oh, that's glorious. So, it's time to take a taste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a tough job. <laughs> wow, it looks delicious. Ooh, it's nice and soft mm. it's tender and the sauce is tangy mm. it's nice and moist it's not dry at all it is fantastic the sriracha gives a little bit of kick mmm 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 this is the best turkey meatloaf I've ever had in my entire life. And I know what you're saying. That's not hard to do because turkey meatloaf is usually bad. But this is absolutely fantastic. It's flavorful. It's moist. A little sticky on the sauce. It is really good. You will absolutely love these. Mm. Here I go. I'm going to be taking these to work. Mm. Really, really good. Um, easy to make. A little, um, you know, it takes a little while because the oven, it takes a while for them to come up to temp and get done, but it's worth it. I think we cooked it about an hour. I always tell people when you're talking about meat, you're cooking to a temperature. You're not cooking for a time. Someone always says to me, when is the turkey done? 
The turkey's done when it reaches at least 165. That's when it's done. A guideline is about an hour, but drive this by the temperature because that is what makes it food safe, not necessarily driven by time. But I would start watching them about halfway through, sauce them, and then let them go. Cook them to your temperature. I tend to cook them a little high. I think I cooked these to 175, 180. Mm. They are so incredibly delicious. If you like this video, please subscribe below and leave me a comment and a like and visit my website at amylearnstocook.com. I'm also on Twitter and Pinterest at Amy Learns to Cook. And don't forget, get in there and cook. You might surprise yourself. Amy mentioned something that was semi-blasphemous about this being the best she's ever eaten. And while she's probably accurate or very close to that, um, the National Pork Association, I'm not their official spokesman, but I play one on TV, um, they would like you to remind you about bacon. Bacon makes everything better. Um, I think this is a very good tasting, but I have to check myself, right? Because, you know, I can't trust anything, right? Mmm. Don't need it. Best turkey meat. Ooh, that sriracha is kind of warming up the tongue and the back of the throat pretty good. Um, I never liked this stuff until we did it on the smoker with bacon, and that was actually pretty good. But for a non-bacon variety, I would say this is really good. Like Amy said, it's moist, but she also cooks it to a higher temperature because she likes the texture better, and I'm usually against that, but I think it's holding together very well. So, um, I really can't think of anything bad to say about this. It's very flavorful, lots of layers of flavor. The texture is just great. And, you know, I don't know, I could easily steal one of these two for lunch, right, Boo? If you're not looking. Mm -hmm. on high. Woo! Help if I had a blade on here.